um, some of the people have links to people in cabinet. Uh, if I can make one example, one, one lady um, mm. has links to the Minister of Communications, Mr. Mondi Kungube. Are those the people that you are talking about that are behind the uh, uh, plot to get rid of you? I didn't mention anybody because I don't know who they are. Uh, but we've, we talked with the President about uh, this matter yesterday. And uh, he has also done his checking and uh, he's uh, concluded that there is no plot. Uh, so for now we regard this as faceless people. Uh, to the extent that uh, some people believe their phones are being cloned by someone. Uh, so we decided let's, let's leave it there. But, focus on the way. But are you aware that the, the, some of the messages it's, it are purported to be from Mr. Chaoki? I've not, it has not been brought to my attention. Has that not been brought to your attention? So you, no. you were just alerted that there are messages doing the rounds? Yeah. Is, Do that, is there a reason you think people might not want you to eventually be president? There are always a reason why people don't want someone. In your case, have you figured out why they are so opposed to you? I wouldn't know, except that uh, you know people may think that uh, you won't implement the best policies they want. Might be the case. But policies are policies of the ANC. Yeah, but people always think hey, this one might not be the best one to implement them. Let's get somebody else. Uh, but it's not good to speculate, so we decided with the president, let's leave it. So if you read the president's statement, it says, I, I appointed the DP. I'm the only one who can remove him, and as far as I'm concerned, I have no such plans. And you, you don't want a formal thing where this is investigated, and if these people do exist, that they are must. No, I don't want formal... Investigation causes politics, and I understand politics. You know, when you're a political leader, you live in that environment. Uh, so it's okay. People, people don't like you. The only thing is you must focus on doing your work and do it correctly. Of the ANC, uh, what is your assessment? Um, is it um, an ANC that is strong enough to to retain uh, uh, its majority after next year's uh, uh, general elections? With our recent analysis of our work, we quite convinced that we will win the elections next year. Uh, there are provinces where we've agreed we must pay special attention to, and it's uh, mainly three of them. It's Gauteng, KZN and, uh, and the Eastern Cape. Uh, we're going to pay a lot of attention in those provinces because that's where majority of our people are and where we have a lot of challenges. We were very affected as well by COVID-19 where branches were no longer meeting and so on. But <clears throat> the recovery is... But there's a lot of work now to ensure that the ANC is strong, because there are many who are saying uh, you will survive only because of collisions. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually don't want collisions. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> but as people who are realistic, we decided let's set up a framework in case of that eventuality. But firstly, sort out the locals, where there's a lot of chaos. So I met with all of the uh, parties last week to discuss the, the approach. We agreed on the dialogue. Mm. So we proposed to them, let's have a dialogue. And they've agreed. We'll have it on the 4th of, of August, the, the University of the Western Cape. The only party that was not happy was Al Jama. They think they are doing well with their arrangements. We mustn't disturb them, <coughs> especially in Johannesburg. So <coughs> But uh, we've persuaded them that I think it's important to agree 
on how we manage the dialogues must not be about making deals, but must be about the people. Does this, uh, I'm not dialogue, the coalition. The coalition must, must be such that its priority is to serve the people, uh, which obviously needs government to do much to ensure that uh, employment levels go much higher. The economy, on the other hand, has recovered mm -hmm. slightly. You'll know that the, the first quarter of this year, we have a growth of 0.4%. It's not too big, but it went against our worst expectation that we'll go to the negatives. Instead, we didn't. So we're hoping that we, we can push <coughs> higher because as we push a high growth, then we get employment. So I would say, yes, we have not dented unemployment too much, but the economy is now growing. And you'll remember that because of COVID, many societies or countries are battling to recover. Um, and we ourselves were worried about the recovery, but it's, you can see it. You need to ramp up now. Um, and that's really where our focus is. Grow the economy, then you can attend to issues of employment, uh, you know, then address the problems of poverty. If we are now at 7.9% of poverty, it means with additional investments by government, you could push it even further down. And, and, and etc. Um, with, of course, Minister Mantashi being on the left side, you know, to say that uh, 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 renewables won't solve the problem for me. You know, no chilling and everything. Where do you stand on the issues of energy policy? Okay, two things, disagreement and renewable. On disagreement, I spoke to Minister Mantashi myself. He, he indicated that, uh, yes, he didn't sign because he had not read the document. And he said, look, I need to appraise myself of what the issues are. In this, this case, I had not, so I decided I will not sign it. But there is no difference in approach on energy policy. We all agreed. Uh, there's always a view that the others who want renewable, renewables, others not. No, it's not true. We all want renewables. I think the issue has been how quick do we transition? 